Would you like to know how to maximize your GP training? If you're watching this video, chances are you have accepted an offer in GP training or you have already started GP training and want to maximize your training. In this video, I will show you exactly how you can save yourself thousands of pounds worth of expenses, how you can maximize your study budget and invest in your development and increase your value, what to expect from MRC GP, what are the components of the MRC GP, and how to sail through your workplace-based assessment, e-portfolio, how to sail through your AKC and CSA, and how to make the most of your GP training. If you're new to this channel, hi, my name is Dr. Erwin Kwan. I help doctors lead a happy and fulfilling life. I publish new videos every Thursday on the subject of happiness and success. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Let's jump into the first thing you need to know to maximize your GP training from the get-go. If you have to relocate in a new place because of the work purposes having accepted a GP training post, then you will incur relocation expenses. This will include expenses from preliminary visits when you're searching for accommodation, you will incur travel expenses, accommodation expenses, meal subsistence. If you're planning to rent a house, you will have expenses related to letting agency fees. If you have already purchased a house and need to sell your house and buy a new property, then you will incur expenses such as stamp duty, solicitor's fees and other expenses. You may have furniture or other items that you want to take with you in your new house, so you might have removal expenses. If you don't have to relocate for your new job, but have to travel excess miles, then you might incur excess travel expenses. Each of these expenses can add on and make a few thousand pounds. If you're starting a new job, you can apply to have these expenses reimbursed. As a doctor in training, you're eligible to apply for relocation expenses to be reimbursed, and you can apply up to 8,000 pounds during the whole duration of your training. Make sure that you apply for these relocation expenses because at the end of the day, it is money that you could save. During your training, you will incur other expenses. First expense is a GMC medical licensing fee, the registration and the licensing fee. So you will have also the RCGP AIT membership. AIT membership is associate in training membership. As a member of the RCGP, then you have other advantages such as the use of e-learning, access to e-portfolio. You also have a magazine, the Associate in Training Innovate magazine, which is a very useful resource, and you will have discount to courses that the RCGP organize. You will also have to pay medical indemnity fee, and when you're going out on a visit, on a house call, you will also incur travel expenses. So all of these expenses can be reimbursed. RCGP membership fee and GMC licensing fee can be partially refunded. You can apply to the HMRC to have a tax relief. When you start your GP rotation, you may have to buy your own medical equipment. This includes a home visit bag, ENT set, Figmo manometer, a blood pressure cuff. So these equipments can cost a few hundred pounds. I've made a video on the home visit bag to show you exactly what equipment you need to get. The expenses incurred in buying this essential medical equipment can be reimbursed by applying for tax relief. Chances are you will be using your private car to carry out house call. If you're using your private car, make sure that your car is insured for business miles because there's a different cover for insurance if you're using your car for business purpose. What you get out of GP training is determined by what you put in, the time, the effort, and the dedication. If you want to maximize your GP training, you need to make sure that you don't neglect what you're putting in. Make sure that you're working hard and you're cultivating a growth mindset. A growth mindset is where you're inquisitive, you're curious, you want to learn and you want to improve yourself. By having this attitude and taking ownership of your training, then you will get out the best of the training because the training is a great way of actually making sure you hone down your medical skills, you make sure that you have skills for ENT, pediatrics, ophthalmology. These skills are very important when you start working as a GP in the community. You're allocated a study budget 
that you can use to go on and attending courses and you can invest in yourself. It's important that you ask yourself what you want to do after your CCT. Do you want to be a GP with an extended role, previously known as GP with special interests? Do you want to go into medical education? There are different courses available for you to attend depending on what you're interested in. So make sure that you're using your study budget and invest in yourself. If you know that you're interested in children's and pediatrics, then you may want to do the Diploma of Children's Health. If you're interested in gynecology and you're working on obstetrics and gynae post, then this could be a good time for you to complete the Diploma of Royal College of Obstetric and Gynecology. If you're interested in lifestyle medicine, you might want to do a Diploma in Lifestyle Medicine. So there are different career options and there's flexibility in how you want to carve your career in general practice. Make sure you think strategically about the skills that you want to acquire, competencies that you want to acquire that's going to help you to develop your career after your CCT. Time spent commuting is a dead time. How long do you spend in your car every day? Personally, I spend 40 minutes every day in my car. I realize this is an ideal time for me to listen to an audiobook. While driving, you can enjoy a book of your choice. Give a try to Audible and download a free book of your choice today. If you don't want to miss that offer, check the link in the description below. There are many opportunities to attend national and international conferences, exchange and forum. I'd highly recommend if you have a chance to attend the RCGP annual conference. Look out for bursaries that are offered by your local faculty. Local RCGP faculties often sponsor AITs to attend such conferences. Last year I attended the RCGP annual conference in Liverpool. I got to meet interesting GPs who are doing fascinating work from across the world. I've made a video on the conference, you can always watch it if you're interested. In your GP registrar year, your week is divided into 10 sessions. Out of these 10 sessions, 7 sessions are clinical sessions and 3 sessions are educational sessions. The clinical sessions are time when you're working in the GP surgery seeing patients. The educational sessions are divided into three different sessions. So there's the VTS sessions. So this is a weekly teaching session where you meet with other associate trainees and you have teaching and you talk about training. The second educational session is tutorial. This is a tutorial you may have with your supervisor or other GP partners or salary GPs in the surgery. Depending on the educational needs and learning needs you have, then you can discuss with your supervisor what sort of sessions you want to arrange. And then you have what we call the self-directed learning session, which is a half-day release for you to arrange and do what you think is necessary for you in your training. This time is very useful for you to arrange to sit in ENT clinic, ophthalmology clinic, or dermatology clinic, depending on what you think would be beneficial for your training. If you want to use your weekly self-directed learning to conduct a quality improvement project, this is an ideal time to do so. If you want to use that time to do something else, such as working on your e-portfolio, you may do so. You also have out-of-hours commitments that you need to fulfill. If you're working full-time, then you will have to do 72 hours per year. If you have a six-month rotation in GP, then that will be 36 hours. Out of hours consists of gaining experience in urgent primary care. So you're seeing patients in out of hours, and usually these patients have acute problems or unscheduled care. Compared to hospital rotations, when you're in GP rotation, you have more flexibility about the out-of-hours shift you want to do. So you can book out-of-hours shift to your convenience. The practice manager in a GP surgery has a crucial role in organization and delivering services in the practice. As a GP registrar, the practice manager will be coordinating your rota, your clinics. The practice manager may be the one approving your leaves, your expenses, it's important that you cultivate a good working relationship with a practice manager. If your GP rotation is six months from now, it might be a good idea to email the practice manager, to introduce yourself, to let the practice manager know that where you're working at the moment and you will be working in the surgery in six months from now. 
So just to get the practice manager to know you a little bit and to know that you're going to come and work there. During your training, you will have many encounters. It's important that you learn from interesting encounters and make sure that you reflect on them. Because when you reflect on these encounters, you will gain self-awareness and you will gain more perspective and insights about yourself, about your practice. It can help to change your practice. So for example, if you're working in a busy rotation, you might find that you're just doing the job and not learning much. It's important that you take ownership of your learning. If you see an interesting case, you might want to follow that case next week. So when you're working, make sure that you identify interesting cases regularly and you follow them through. If you don't follow up a patient, then you may never know what happened to that patient. So you could just make sure that you make a note of this patient and you check the patient on the system to see what has happened to the patient since your last encounter. This will help you to know what's happened and you will gain more experience from the job. The MRCGP has three components, the workplace-based assessment, the AKT and the CSA slash RCA. The workplace-based assessment is a mix of supervised learning events and it is very important that you make sure that you are on top of this. So these include when you're in hospital, mini CECs and CBDs, you may have to do MSF. It's important that you identify senior colleagues who are willing to complete these supervised learning events early and make sure that you do often ask questions and seek feedback and ask them whether they'll be happy to complete one of these supervised learning events. When you're in GV post, you will have different types of supervised learning events. It's important that you discuss with your supervisor how you're going to make sure that you're on track in completing this workplace-based assessment. One of the workplace-based assessment is the patient satisfactory questionnaires. This is a form that patients are asked to fill and you will need at least 40 patients questionnaire completed so that we get an idea about how you are as a doctor and what is the perception of the patient and whether they are satisfied by the encounter they have in the consultation with you. The change is taking place with the ePortfolio as we speak and there will be a new ePortfolio from August 2020. Having said that, it's important that you look up on the RCGP website, the workplace-based assessment, to know the updated requirements. The second component of the MRCGP is the Applied Knowledge Test. The Applied Knowledge Test is a theory assessment that you take either in your ST2 year or ST3 year. I sat mine in my ST2 year in my first rotation while I was working in GP rotation. Being in a GP rotation helped because I had sufficient time to prepare and I was able to apply for study leave to prepare for the test. You can also do it while you're in a hospital placement, but make sure that you will have enough time to prepare. Usually about three to four months is necessary to prepare for the applied knowledge test. I've made a series on how to prepare for the applied knowledge test. I will put a link down in the description below. You can always watch it if you are preparing for the applied knowledge test. The third component of the MRCGP is the Clinical Skills Assessment, also known as CSA. The Clinical Skills Assessment is an OSCE-based examination where your skills, your consultation skills, communication skills are assessed by examiner. You have 13 sessions and 13 scenarios where you need to actually consult a patient or a relative and you need to make sure that you're showing skills that the examiner will be assessing you. There are three different domains that this exam is assessed. The first one is data gathering, how well you're gathering information in your history taking, how well you're examining the patient. The second part is the clinical management, whether you're making sure that the management is shared with a patient and whether you're eliciting a patient ideas concerning expectation and addressing that in the second part where you're doing your clinical management. The third domain is interpersonal skills. It is about how well you build rapport with a patient, how you're developing the relationship, are you empathetic in your consultation, and how you come across as a doctor. Preparation is key for the CSA. It is an exam that requires practice and repetition and feedback. It's important that 
you record your consultations and analyze what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong and how you can improve. If you have any questions or any comments about this video, please let me know down in the comment section. I aim to read every comment on this channel. If you have any suggestion for future videos, please let me know down in the comment section as well. I look forward to hear from your suggestion. If you've not already subscribed to this channel, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell and don't forget to smash the like button. Take care everybody, bye bye.